Dear students, please open your textbook before you start listening. Underline important lines and mark difficult words. Happy listening and happy learning. By Raina Admane. Thank you. Page number 43. Figure 3.3. Action of steam on a metal. Metal react with water and produce a metal oxide and hydrogen gas. Metal oxide that are soluble in water dissolved in it to further form metal hydroxide. But all metal do not react with water. Metal plus water is equal to metal oxide plus hydrogen. Metal oxide plus water is equal to metal hydroxide. Metals like potassium and sodium react violently with cold water. In case of sodium and potassium, the reaction is so violent and exothermic that the evolved hydrogen immediately catches fire. Twice K plus twice H2O is equal to twice KOH plus H2 plus heat energy. Twice Na plus twice H2O is equal to twice NaOH plus H2 plus heat energy. The reaction of calcium with water is less violent. The heat evolved is not sufficient for the hydrogen to catch fire. Ca plus twice H2O is equal to CaOH twice plus H2. Calcium is start floating because the bubbles of hydrogen gas form stick to the surface of the metal. Magnesium does not react with cold water. It react with hot water to form magnesium hydroxide and hydrogen. It also start floating due to the bubbles of hydrogen gas sticking to its surface. Metals like aluminium, iron and zinc do not react either with cold or hot water, but they react with steam to form the metal oxides and hydrogen. Twice Al plus thrice H2O is equal to Al2O3 plus thrice H2. Thrice Fe plus 4H2O is equal to Fe3O4 plus 4H2. Metals such as lead, copper, silver and gold do not react with water at all. 3.2.3 What happens when metal react with acids? You have already learned that metal react with acids to give us salt and hydrogen gas. Page number 44. Metal plus dilute acid is equal to salt plus hydrogen. But do all metal react in the same manner? Let us find out. Activity 3.11. Collect all the metal sample except sodium and potassium again. If the samples are tarnished, rub them clean with sandpaper. Caution. Do not take sodium and potassium as they react vigorously even with cold water. Put the sample separately in test tube containing dilute hydrochloric acid. Suspend thermometers in the test tube so that their bulbs are dipped in the acid. Observe the rate of formation of bubbles carefully. Which metal reacted rigorously with dilute hydrochloric acid? With which metal did you record the highest temperature? Arrange the metals in the decreasing order of reactivity with dilute acids. Write equation for the reaction of magnesium, aluminium, zinc and iron with dilute hydrochloric acid. Hydrogen gas is not evolved when a metal reacts with nitric acid. It is because HNO3 is a strong oxidizing agent. It oxidizes the H2 produced to water and itself gets reduced to any of the nitrogen oxide, N2O, NO, NO2. But magnesium and manganese react with very dilute HNO3 to evolve H2 gas. You must have observed in activity 3.11 that the rate of formation of bubble was the fastest in the case of magnesium. The reaction was also the most exothermic in this case. The reactivity decreases in the order Mg greater than Al greater than Zn greater than Fe. In the case of copper, 
no bubbles were seen and the temperature also remained unchanged this shows that copper does not react with dilute hcl now column do you know aqua regia latin for royal water is a freshly prepared mixture of concentrated hydrochloric acid and concentrated nitric acid in the ratio of 3 to 1 it can dissolve gold even though neither of these acids can do so alone aqua regia is a highly corrosive fuming liquid it is one of the few reagents that is able to dissolve gold and platinum 3.2.4 how do metals react with solution of other metal salts activity 3.12 Take a plain wire of copper and an iron nail. Put the copper wire in a solution of iron sulfate and the iron nail in a solution of copper sulfate taken in test tube. Figure 3.4. Record your observation after 20 minutes. Page number 45. In which test tube did you find that a reaction has occurred? On what basis can you say, say that A reaction has actually taken place. Can you correlate your observation for the activities 3.9, 3.10, and 3.11? Write a balanced chemical equation for the reaction that has taken place. Name the type of reaction. Reactive metals can displace less reactive metal from their compound in solution or molten form. We have seen in the previous sections that. All metals are not equally reactive. We check the reactivity of various metal with oxygen, water and acid, but all metal do not react with these reagents. So we were not able to put all the metal sample we had collected in decreasing order of their reactivity. Displacement reaction studied in chapter 1 gives better evidence about the reactivity of metal. It is simple and easy. If metal A displaces metal B from its solution, it is more reactive than B. Metal A plus salt solution of B is equal to salt solution of A plus metal B. Which metal, copper or iron, is more reactive according to your observations in activity 3.12? In figure 3.4, reaction of metal with salt solution is shown. 3.2.5 the reactivity series the reactivity series is a list of metal arranged in the order of their decreasing activities after performing displacement experiments activity 1.9 and 3.12 the following series table 3.2 known as the reactivity or activity series has been developed table 3.2 activity series relative reactivities of metals k potassium na sodium ca calcium mg magnesium al aluminum zn zinc fe iron pb lead h hydrogen cu copper hg mercury ag silver au gold from upward direction to downward upward metals are most reactive then reactivity decreases and finally the less reactive at the metals are in last page number 46 questions Number 1 Why is sodium kept immersed in kerosene oil? 2 Write equations for the reactions of first iron with steam second calcium and potassium with water third samples of four metals a b c and d were taken and added to the following solution one by one The results obtained have been tabulated as follows. Use the table above to answer the following question about metals A, B, C, and D. 
first one which is the most reactive metal second what would you observe if b is added to a solution of copper sulfate third arrange the metals a b c and d in the order of decreasing reactivity question number 4 Which gas is produced when dilute hydro hydrochloric acid is added to a reactive metal? Write the chemical reaction when iron react with dilute H2SO4. Question number 5. What would you observe when zinc is added to a solution of iron 2 sulfate? Write the chemical reaction that take place. 3.3 How do metals and non-metals react? In the above activities, you saw the reactions of metals with a number of reagents. Why do metals react in this manner? Let us recall what we learned about the electronic configuration of element in class 9. We learned that noble gases which have completely filled valence shell show little chemical activity. we therefore explain the reactivity of elements as a tendency to attain a completely filled valence shell let us have a look at the electronic configuration of noble gases and some metals and non metals we can see from table 3.3 that a sodium atom has one electron in its outermost shell if it loses the electron from its m shell then its l shell now becomes the outermost shell and that has a stable octet the nucleus of this atom still has 11 proton but the number of electron has become 10 so there is a net positive charge giving us a sodium cation na plus on the other hand chlorine has 7 electron in its outermost shell page number 47 table 3.3 electronic configuration of some elements four columns are given in that type of element second column element third column atomic number fourth column number of electrons in shells like this it is given and there is type of element noble gases then metals then non metals and it require one more electron to complete its octet if sodium and chlorine were to react the electron lost by sodium could be taken up by chlorine after gaining an electron the chlorine atom gets a unit negative charge because its nucleus has 17 proton and there are 18 electron in its k l and m shells this gives us a chlorine anion cl minus so both these element can give a give and take relation between them as follows you look carefully on figure 3.5 there you can see all these things on this page which you can see on the screen sodium and chloride ions being oppositely charged attract each other and are held by strong electrostatic forces of attraction to exist as sodium chloride nacl it should be noted that sodium chloride does not exist as molecule but aggregates of oppositely charged ions let us see the formation of one or more ionic compounds magnesium chloride thank you students please listen twice for better understanding hope you like the video and subscribe for upcoming videos